Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. Let not one sincere heart live here without an encounter. Many people came from far crying, crying. Will you pay us a visit? Whether the person is known or unknown. You don't have to be known. You don't have to even be in this hall. All you need is a heart cry, a hunger. I'm feeling something already. So you need to get ready. There is no time. There is no time. Cry out! Push. A little more. Push. 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 Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. You can't be casual. Stop looking at your neighbor. Somebody can come here. Collect something. Leave. In the next two, three years, you will see the person. You will say, I attended IEC with him. Because you are sitting together. You think you are there. The same place in the spirit. Labor for your destiny. <laughs> the day you know life is not a joke. You leave your labor and labor. remaining a little. We are almost there. Push it. There is a location. There is a place where God that knows in our hearts the things that he has ordained for us. We appear there by hunger. We appear by our desire. In Jesus mighty name. So we are considering a theme, the life of prayer. You see, this topic, the life of prayer, is like an invitation that God is given to us so that we can interact with his life and purposes. There is something that is in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16. And if you don't look at it well, you will think it has a lot to do with something else. Meanwhile, God is speaking about something. Meanwhile, encounters will be taking place as I'm speaking. If you want to title my teaching, you can call it the pangs of resurrection. The pangs of resurrection. There is something God is doing in our days. And if we don't see it, we miss out. And it's not even many times because we are better than people that came before us. It's because we are in the fullness of times. And the purposes of God captured in that season is supposed to be powered by something. There is a measure of energy that we need to generate so that God can walk like he has never walked before. The scripture said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, if you look at this scripture, you will think that it has a lot to do with the world. It has everything to do with life, the life of God. The reason is because the purposes of God is driven by his life. The absence of that life truncates every single thing that God wants to do. So, in the sin of Adam, his inability to possess and interface with that life is what truncated the purposes of God. So, what God is rescuing is not just man. He is rescuing his purpose in man. Because in that state that Adam is, he lacks the capacity to receive, possess, and interface with life. Meanwhile, the purpose of God is in his life. So he can't do anything outside of that life. And this is the point here. If God invites us to the life of prayer, it is beyond the fact that we are making prayer a lifestyle, something that is a culture. It is also about the fact that there is an invitation to consider the livingness of prayer. The fact that prayer is life is something the livingness and that consideration will bring us to the point where we drive beyond time i had a body for long for long i said if i'm going to pray like this lord you have to link me up link this prayer levels from time to eternity and if you can link it up for me through the scripture then there is no reason why because all the time if i'm praying there is a way i will pray people will say you are killing yourself it's not like this it's not like this i needed to know something beyond the explanations in the natural that there is a hope held for me beyond this earth that there is something the holy ghost is doing beyond what we can want him to manifest 
If all the prayer I pray as a result of the interface of the life of God that is in me is to have a manifestation for my ministry and my life, then we have not gone anywhere. We will live and die and then our prayer will speak. Because even if I die, my prayer will be alive. We need to consider the livingness of prayer. That is how to bring men into a place where even if he prays for 24 hours, he calculates and finds out according to the purpose of God and the economy of grace that will be released by prayer to power that purpose. We have not even been, we have not measured 10%. Let's welcome our Father in them. Are you with me now? My God. So that is why we are here to consider that prayer is life. Now, the point is this. Many people pray, identify prayer as a thing on its own. And if you identify prayer as a thing on its own, there are many challenges you will have and there are many answers that you can't have. Because there are things that you, you can even pray and not have answer and say that God did not respond. But if you see prayer as a life, a livingness, then you will notice that as long as a man is touching life in prayer, so this is what it is. Prayer, the purpose, first thing that we try to enter into in prayer is to touch life. And that is number one. Number two is after touching life, we need to generate life. So it's all about life. Take your minds off your anointing. Take your mind off your ministry. Remove your mind here from even power. Those things are consequences of somebody piping into a realm. Somebody came and told me that uh, you are anointed. I don't even notice it. Before God, I don't notice that I'm anointed. I don't, I don't notice it. If you keep anointing, keep prayer. A million times I will choose prayer. Some of you don't even know the things that can die. When Jesus resurrected, in his resurrection, he held up a few things in heaven that can die. So that even if I, we finish from here, the record of that will be kept. It's like a continuous journey. It is transcendent. Now, this is what I'm saying. If we can find the livingness in prayer, it means that prayer is transcendent because the life of God doesn't die. Are you with me here? Yeah. Your definition of prayer actually affects the way you give yourself to it. If we define prayer by the hedonistic interpretation that is profound in Africa, then we can say that Africa, you know, people say that the only thing they are doing in Africa is pray. No, it's our definition is hedonistic. It's what they do in my village where you go to an idol, give the idol something, he gives you something. You don't have a relationship with that idol. So people, people gather and pray and then they are receiving things. They don't want the prayer to affect their life. They don't consider the fact that even, even if there is nothing you are supposed to do, does it mean that prayer is no more needed? Does it mean that there are no purposes in the heart of God to achieve? How selfish have we become? So as was taught us yesterday, the first thing that the first layer that God needs to deal with for us to encounter this ministry that God is bringing to us in this conference is for us to understand the fact that we have to lay aside every form of selfishness. The measure to which you can get there is the measure to which you can touch the power in prayer and through prayer. Now I need you to understand that the life of God that we possessed in Christ, we possessed it on the grounds of resurrection. Let's see Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. This is resurrection. Even so we also should walk in the newness of life. That means the grounds for this life that we received in Christ Jesus is resurrection. Never forget this. I know you think what I said is easy, but this thing I said now is all encompassing. It captures everything. Anything in this kingdom that is not from the grounds of resurrection lacks the capacity to survive. Not to talk of even accomplishing the people. It can't survive. Part of the reason why Jesus... Can you hear me? Part of the reason why Jesus needed to die is for us to know 
I'm saying part, is for us to know whether his life can survive. Now, that life survived because before he went, and that is part of the witness he wants to be held when he came to the resurrection, to the raising of Lazarus. They said many things. They said, I am the resurrection and life. That means in him is the reality of what we become corporate after his resurrection. Now, we want, want to know, can he survive? So by the time Jesus was able to rise from the dead, we knew by that resurrection. Resurrection is, in my own opinion, the most important aspect of our faith. That's my own opinion. In fact, in the book of Acts, initially, they say, speaking about what the apostles were doing, that they gave witness to the resurrection. It is not everything specifically about him. It is the resurrection. It is the resurrection that Satan is fighting to make sure that men are not aware of. And I need to put it to you that anytime we see resurrection in any shade or form manifest again, Satan will go to any length to make sure that resurrection in that manner huh, is being shut down. So it's told people, go and tell them that Jesus has no reason, but he has risen. And if Jesus has risen, everything that he has in himself, everything that he possessed in himself has experienced the same resurrection that he experienced, including we that is in him. I believe that we have come in a season in the purposes of God that he has begun to introduce some things as signs to us. There are languages through which God speaks. Doesn't necessarily have to say anything. Meanwhile, he has to litter the atmosphere everywhere with that signs. As he said, he will do it. But many times, I begin to ask myself the question, why is it that God will say he will do something and bring the sign and nobody will see it? Like even the the Jews, we are preaching about the Messiah. He came, they killed him. Have you know, ask question. And some of them are still waiting for him till now. And that is why I believe in the next 15 minutes, my job is to see if I can do a little interpretation. Because something would have missed in the book of Acts chapter 2 if it was not for the fact that a man rose up and said, this is that we cannot get to that point then we'll be looking for what is not lost you'll be looking for what God has handed out to you and that season will totally pass and then you become victim of something you should be a master the momentum in the spirit that is ordained to carry the tide of your calling will come and dissipate and nothing happens the will and purpose of God for the land and territory. The means through which he has designed to achieve it. It will come. Because there is no power of man that can achieve that. He will sit around the resource from heaven. That if we join that momentum, we come to the place where we just realize. We, it was not our plan. We just realize we are there. Show me Romans chapter 8. <laughs> Show me verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. I want to establish three things first. Number one is that fundamentally this scripture is like a relational comparison actually this place is a record of the salvific labors of Jesus, of the Christ now in an organic way this is him if, show, show us verse 1 please Can, show us verse 1 therefore now there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, this has to do with saving, salvific but the man came to verse 26. Give me my 26. Let's, let's see what we can do. And began to talk about prayer now. Uh, and I began to ask myself questions. Okay, so I said, if you look at this scripture, you will not be able to understand it until you consider that precious word there, likewise. So after me, likewise. Another way you can say it in the same manner in the same manner likewise likewise is the key word here that's the first thing i need you to consider that means if there is a likewise there are two parts that we are considering 
using one as a mirror to show you what, what obtains in this contextually. So this man is doing a labor. I like the ministry of Paul. He builds his argument on irrefutable premises. So that by the time he arrives to his point, he will say something. Even if you want to say it's not true, you cannot because you have been agreeing with him all this while. <laughs> so that's what Paul is doing here. He said, likewise, the spirit also helped. Number two is, we need to consider this word, help is one of the richest words. If you consider other parts of the scripture where the word help is used, it is I, it's either, it's mostly sunejo. It's like the two of us cooperating together to do something. This one is not sunejo. It's sunanti lambanomai. This is what it means. It means that the Holy Ghost will never allow only you to do it. And even him alone can do it. Sunanti means he will hold it as long as you are holding it. If you leave it, he leave it. That's why anytime I come to prayer, I tell people you stop where you want to stop. You are the one that decided to stop. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Sometimes you pray for 12 hours. The prayer starts that time. How I many of you it has happened to that's when the prayer started? The whole one we are doing is opening prayer. We are trying to tear the heaven. Suddenly, something happens. Suddenly, oh, an energy that is like that of 10,000 men will possess my heart. It will seem as if I want to explode. I'll be looking for how to do. I'll be if I don't. Oh my! If I don't groan and travel, I will die. And so I find a place. That thing is not me. Someone help me. We held ourselves together. It's like two people hugging themselves. There is a groaning spirit within me, oh. I pray, you are not I that pray. There is a praying spirit within me. Oh. You can't do it. Leave it. But if the Holy Ghost comes, he grabs you. In this groaning now, he grabs you. He monopolizes you. He holds you down. Even if you want to leave, you can't. The Holy Ghost will grab you. Some of you hearing me now, he will grab you. He will not release you till this conference is over. The way you are moving, you can't touch the power of your dimension. You are moving like this. Meanwhile, your calling is heavy. You are just searching around. Meanwhile, you are carrying an anointing that will shake territories. Come at the travail. Let something be breathed. Something strong and heavy. Oh, I can't die like this, oh no. Sometimes the visions I see is too is stronger than people's. The things people tell me about my calling is not strong enough. The visions I see in the spirit cannot allow me to come out. No, remove that one. Now listen. The Holy Spirit is grabbing men now. But the Spirit itself maketh intercessions with groanings that cannot be uttered. <laughs> you know, the way to understand this thing is like the Holy Spirit inviting you and, said, and saying, come and see how I pray. The Holy Ghost, has he invited you? Say, come and see how I pray. You come out from that place. I, I assure you, your prayer life, your prayer mode, your target will change. Say, I invite you to come and see how I pray. And that's why many people, you have not actually, you and Holy Ghost have never prayed before. You will not believe it. I'm telling you, if you and him join to pray, he grabs you. What he does is that he will be praying and say, oh yeah, watch me. If you watch him long enough, something will enter inside of you. You won't even know when you are doing what you are doing. Somebody monopolize you. It was Jesus that exemplified it many times. Even the Messianic scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 captured the same thing. If I have time, I will show you before I go. 
that is the scripture that changed my life many years ago and I knew that God is not counting how long he's counting the soul travail as, as, as you are dying as, as you are pouring your soul that scripture where we read yesterday where the scripture said that the sweat coming out of his body is like his blood I went to ask medic, his blood your blood <laughs> so when, when, when if somebody tell you it's not about sweating it's about sweating my friend it's about sweating you need to sweat. Jesus sweated. My friend, come down. Where did you read it? I choose to follow Jesus. I won't follow you. If my sweating will get me to the place where I conquer the powers of death, oh, I will keep sweating. Oh. There is a praying spirit within me. Oh, 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 Help me now, Holy Ghost. Help me now. There is a groaning spirit within me. Monopolize me, monopolize me, monopolize me. Hold me down till your purpose is achieved. Don't leave me. Why am I always, why, why am I always leaving? Hold me there. Hold me. Hold me. Why are you Why are you Why are Why Why Listen to me. Show me verse 19. As I round up. So the Lord showed me as I was, we are praying. I saw many wombs in the spirit. But they were tied. And the Lord said he is going to loosen those wombs. You don't get into this thing. It's loosened. It's from heaven. The things we speak about are spiritual things. It is an act of God that brings us into it. I see wombs. Wombs of travel. Wombs. Wombs of groaning. Wombs. Wombs. Uh, wombs. 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 Wombs that we carry nations. Give birth to it. For the earnest expectation of the creature. Waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. Next verse. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Not willingly, but by the reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. If I have time, I will just analyze this matter of hope. Because I had an encounter. And the Lord told me that the hope that he spoke about, that the season of that hope has appeared. In fact, that is why I'm teaching you on resurrection. Because the hope of God is riding upon the capacity of resurrection to spread. That is the only means through which he can conquer everything. That hope. When Paul spoke about hope, he's still speaking about the same resurrection. So when you consider this scripture, you will find out that there are three categories of people that will experience these levels of the spirit. Are you with me? That is why Paul was able to compare and relate the two of them. There is the levels of the spirit in creation. There is the levels of the spirit in the church. There is the levels of the spirit in you. He's trying to compare all of them. The reason why he started with creation is that it is abundantly obvious that creation is substandard. But him that did it, did it in hope that there is a day where something will come from heaven factored into creation by the effulgence of what is in the heart and life of sons. In hope. In hope. Don't miss this word, in hope. Because by the time we came to the verse 26, he said, likewise, for you to understand likewise, you need to understand. Are you getting what I'm saying? Likewise. No, okay. For the creature was made subject to, not willingly, but by the reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Next verse. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from corruption. So he's comparing the two. The creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into 
the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Next verse. For we know, even though we don't know. But I found out something about Paul. He kept saying, we know. We know, we know. But he has not asked us whether we know. Because if you know, revelation is functional. You can't say, I know. And something is not happening. God is not giving you knowledge to just make your head big. It has to be functional. It is that livingness that connects it with God. God cannot connect. He can't connect outside of that his life. He can't. Even if he tries, he can't. Your mind is not strong enough to connect with him. Even if you, he said, my thoughts are higher. So he can't connect to you on thought level. He has to come. Even if you are thinking, his life has to galvanize it. That's the way he can flow. Are you following me now? Watch. He said, for we know that the creation, the whole creation, grown it and travel it together in pain till now. Oh my God. So he said that creation is groaning and traveling, it's traveling even till now. Remember my, our precious word. What's the, what's the word? You are with me. What's the word? Let me hear you. What's the word? Let me hear you. What's the word? For we know that the whole creation grown it and traveled it together in pain till now. That means that there is a layer, a depth to the corruption and pain that creation is passing through. And according to this scripture, the spirit calibrated the measure, the depth of the pain that creation is passing through and called it groanings and travails. Remember he's relating to, we are staying with creation now. Are you getting the point? He said we have calibrated the pain that creation is suffering as a result of the fall, as a result of corruption, as a result of all that happened, as a result of the, the things that Adam did. We found out that it is at the layer of groanings and travail in pain together until now. Let's see the next verse. And not only they. So in case you think I'm talking about only creation. You will see here that the man is deliberately putting all of us together. Because the labor that we bring liberation to creation is powered by the spirit. As a result of the resurrection that Jesus got on a legal basis. There is a need to administer it organically. And the means the person that does it is the Holy Ghost. The means through which he's doing it is the invitation that is given us today. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. <laughs> and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan. Groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of the body. So this is it. I told you to consider something. Paul spoke in verse 26, speaking about prayer. But you will not understand his position. Except he takes you back to the one that you cannot argue. And that is the fact that in hope, the meaning of the fact that Jesus resurrected is that there is a resurrection hope for everybody that believed in him. Is he okay? He's now saying that there is a work he can do now. And that is in the place. Can you follow me now? In the place of prayer. He said, likewise. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Next verse. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is, that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? Next verse. But if we hope, he is comparing a lot of things. He built the first one, built the second one. I say, but if we hope, if it is true in a literal sense that you accepted the premise that he built, that there is a hope for you after this life as a believer. The scripture said it abundantly, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that if our hope only is in this life, that we are of all men the most miserable. He said, if you sustain the same hope, you need to understand the means through which it will be achieved that time. And know that that means can still work even now. That when you get to the place of prayer, likewise. When you get to the place of intercession, what? Likewise. So I said, okay. So the Holy Spirit wants to walk in me now and walk through me a measure of the things that he wants to walk ultimately. He wants me to experience the things that God has ordained as a means through which men we enter their liberty, their redemption. When he enters into me and brings me to his layer, brings me to the point where he's cooking creation. He's the one cooking creation. Because he knew that there is a day 
creation will join, join, join man's sons into their liberty. So he's cooking creation, he's cooking it. And the Bible made us to understand it. The person that subjected it to vanity did it in hope, hoping that a day will come. A day will come and the lepers of God will take off, take off from the point of resurrection. So those pangs, those pangs that the Holy Ghost feel, you must feel it. If, if God will use you to achieve something substantial, you should know the things of God are not born smiling. The life you had, how was it giving birth to? The, the, the life of God in you, how was it giving birth to? I know if I ask you, you will say the cross. That Jesus went to, before he went to the cross, he has died. By the time he was standing up from that place, he said, let's go. For him, it is done. Huh? And I can show you from the scripture that there is a little reference made about Gogota. All the references about the sacrifice of Jesus had to do with Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Even where we were taught yesterday in the book of Hebrews chapter 5, it is still Gethsemane. Resurrection. We must feel it so that we can even awaken the things that God has ordained for this generation that is in Christ. It has not woken up. They are like angels. Many years ago, we saw one, two, three, four angels. Very high and mighty. And God said, that's the engine I want to use to walk in the last days. Only one is still walking. I began to be bothered. Start it now, Lord. Start, Lord. start it now. Mm, it will not start. There is a layer. There is pangs you need to get to. I put it to you. Many of you sitting here have not actually experienced your calling. No. You think you are in your calling. You are not yet. Wait. When pangs hold you, you become another person. You become literally another person. The things that will be born cannot die. It can die. If you put pressure in it, it becomes stronger. It can die. It can't. It can't. I know. It can die. It can die. Me, you don't know me. Me, I am, I am the vice president before of the Introvert Association of Nigeria. I lack the ability to come out to the point that people give me name and I accept. I am here because an engine that I can't stop is at work. I can't stop. Even if I say I want to stop, I want to stop. I want. It's like a vent. I can't, can't hold it. I can't hold it. Literally, God bear me witness. Sometimes I feel as if if I don't pray, I will die. That's how I feel. When I come and tell people, they think I'm actually trying to push. If it's not true, I will be the first to run away. I will be the first. I pray to the point that as I'm talking to you now, when the Holy Spirit gets you here, as we are taught yesterday, you are not aware. You are held down to the point that you begin to enjoy prayer. I have never in my life experienced the measure of intact. I'm married now, Jesus Christ. But... My wife, don't listen to this, but I have never experienced the measure of intercourse I've experienced in prayer anyway. I can leave anything to pray. If I don't have prayer point, you will think if I don't have prayer point. As long as there is a purpose in the life, in the, in the Father, as long as I have his life, I know there is a purpose. I'll be cooking it with him. I'm a partner. I'm not just a servant. I'm not, I'm not just sent to do ministry. I'm a partner in God's eternal purposes. That's how I see myself. I know that if I finish living here, if there is another life, I will still be working. What's your view? Where are you stopping? What's your view? Is this thing that we are doing? It will make you do anything. But when you see the eyes of a man, the things that have captured his heart, you will know how far he will go. Even if I pray, anointing come good. Anything that comes, that's not why we are here. I don't notice it. I don't. You know why? Eternal matters has galvanized my heart. The spirit by his groanings has brought me to the place where things in the natural has become irrelevant. They become small. Then you, you grow tall. Your heart enlarges. You grow tall. It enlarges. You grow. It enlarges. You grow. It en till you can carry a whole territory in your heart. When you enter your secret place, it's not one man praying. It's not one man. It's a nation praying. There is an invitation. The things we heard about has become an outpouring now. The brother that was leading us in opening prayer yesterday. He said, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. Until that time, things will remain the same. If you like this, well, <laughs> nothing will happen until, until that time. Until, until. I told God, see, I like prophecy, I like prophesying. I told God a long time ago, I said, I want to be 
take me where the labor is hardest. Put me there. I didn't believe he would answer it. Because what I'm telling you is labor. Take me to where labor is hardest. Your humanity will be suspended. But you will notice. In a short time, you will gain age in God. You will age. <laughs> you will age. Because there is a realm in prayer. Where it is as if you come in the presence of a master spirit. And when you appear there, after some time, it seems as if you are becoming like that spirit. Naturally, you are still young. But something happens to your thinking. Something happens to your delivery. Something happens to your drive that you cannot explain. We are coming to an age where darkness will increase. And only life from the grounds of resurrection can counter it. That's what I want to say. So God went ahead of us and began to look for means, instruments that have the ability to open up the deepest wells of life. I said, okay, it's prayer that we are going to do. It's prayer. But I need to take you to depth. I prayed for many years. Some years ago, God now called me. He said, come, let me teach you prayer. I said, I don't understand. What have I been doing? What have I been doing? I know some of you will think that this thing I said is just common. But I believe that one or two people that has worked with God has experienced the same thing. It is that time that God wants to show you prayer as it means as it means what it is to him, not to you. To him, it is a co-opting. From that moment, when you give yourself to prayer, first of all, God will show you the means through which we pray his prayer. And then when you engage it, it will be touching the things that him alone wants to walk. There are things that God wants to walk by himself. Huh? That's why he's bringing us to groanings and travail. You know why? Creation is sinking down. Sinking down. And when you see men groan and, and travel, it is a manifestation. Remember, I told you that is the levels of the spirit. Are you getting the point? It is a manifestation of the measure of the level of the Holy Ghost. Just as it is throughout the scripture. Anytime the Holy Spirit comes into a new level, he will give us a manifestation as a sign. That is why in the book of Acts chapter 2, somebody has to stand and say, these people you see saying this thing, it is what Joel said. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? As long as we walk with God, we will be crying out for something that can counter this. What can counter this? What can counter this? And God knows this inside of us. And if he allows us at that our layer, are you getting what I'm saying? We will keep becoming comfortable and assume that that's the best that God can do. So he allows something adverse to be happening. As he's increasing, you'll be going deeper. There, there might not be answers or things to testify to the path that you are joining. But you will notice that grace in that thing will keep increasing. Grace will keep increasing. Grace will keep increasing. I want to ask you, does God need to explain to you what he's doing with your prayer? Does he need to explain to you? You have not started praying yet. That's why you are asking, this one I pray, nothing. This one I pray. What if you pray and die? God didn't tell you what he wants to do with your prayer. That's how I see prayer. Somebody told me that, he said, uh, is it power you are praying for? <laughs> I remember one IEC that time I came. Where we are staying. As soon as we as soon as we dismiss, bam, I've left. Even is that I calculated the 45 minutes and one hour people used to say things that are not normal. You speak away the encounter you received. Received. Now, I'm not saying you should not talk. Or you can do whatever you want. But that's how I feel, felt. I zoomed off. When I entered where we are staying, it's actually, Papa, I entered there. There was a room where inside, as soon as I entered, I used, sometimes if I find something, I use sometimes I'll use something, cover myself and sleep. I'll force myself to sleep. If I refuse to sleep, I'll pray myself to sleep. Then in the night, when everybody has slept, I'll wake up, maybe around one or two, and stay till daybreak. Once it's five, I take my bath. I didn't know that there is a brother that was seeing me. He said that I am looking for, for power. That's why I'm praying like this. God forbid. I tell you something. Before I have ever come here, I already have oil. I was born into this thing. I didn't even enjoy the world small. From when I was small, that's how I started doing this thing. So sometimes I wish I even enjoyed the one day, came back and said, I'll be, as I'm preaching, I'll be telling you about my former life. But I don't have former life. If you have heard me preach, I don't have former life. There is no former, I, want, I, I wanted a former life to talk. I didn't have anyone. That, I was a little angry with God. Allow me to, so that I will preach about your power to save from well, I didn't have nine years old. I'm already off. Before I was 14, I've read my Bible many times. Not because I really wanted, but the environment cultures me to do that. Huh? 
So I've been in this thing. You see, anointing is good. Without it, you can't do ministry. That's, it. That's not why I'm praying. That time I've already... But something is cooking in me and telling me there is a place God is going and we have not found a fountain that can sustain it. We need to get to the fountain that can sustain it. If God opens this new season to us, what we are doing now lacks the capacity to hold it. You are clapping for yourself. When it opens, your prayer life is not large enough. There is a measure of life we need to that can carry it. You are not there. It's a call to awaken. Take me to a place where I'll be lost. Take me to the place where I will grow. And then I, I, I will be, by the time I'm coming out, not just about me, something will be released. Your environment will be an environment of life. If such a person sits in this auditorium, it doesn't matter who is preaching. Life will feel everywhere. He's carrying something out of his secret place. Those men are working as mobile effulgents of what God can do with a man that is yielded. One day, we are going to pray now. One day, <laughs> I was, when I was doing youth service, I went to my youth service fasting and praying. Actually, my prayer life changed when I encountered a book, just one book. Why Revival Tarris by Leonard Ravenhill. One word he used there changed my life. He said Revival Tarris because we have left agonizing and gone into organizing. I kept searching for the meaning of that word. That word agonizing did not leave me. I was hearing in my spirit, in my sleep, everywhere agonizing. I want to tell you, there is nothing pleasant about agonizing. When you say, Holy Spirit, help me and pray, I say he has not helped you, as you think. When he actually helps you, he takes you to his level. He prays by agonizing. Can you hear what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit prays by agonizing, by travails, by groanings. If you tell him, I want to pray, like, take me to pray, like, he takes you there. But if you want him to help you at your level, he can still help you at your level. He can help you at any, if you like, stay on the surface. If you like, be moving like leaf, he will still help you. He has been sent as your helper. But if you tell him, I want to pray like you, say, come, agonizing. That's how I pray. That's how I'm working on creation. That's how I'm working to bring the things that Jesus did into reality. When I heard that word, agonizing, it kept troubling me, troubling me. So I went into fasting. After fasting for a while, I, nothing happened. I continued. From there, I went to youth service. I kept praying every day, hours in the night. There is no night that I missed my night with jail for about one year. But somewhere in the ninth month, I think, one day we are on a Wednesday, we are having our Wednesday prayer in the night. Normally we start by 11, but I normally come around 9. I come around 9, I will be pacing around where we normally pray. I'll be pacing around, cautioning it spiritually, pacing around, pacing around. So when we pray to some point, because I've been making a prayer for long, suddenly at a point in the prayer, the reason why I'm telling you this thing is now, that that thing will happen to a few of you. When we got to a point, Suddenly, God opened our eyes and we saw an angel suspended between heaven and earth. And he was carrying a pot. A pot with fire in it. And he asked us, should I break it? Of course, we don't know what will happen if he breaks it. He said that the reason why they came is that there is somebody crying in pain and saying that this labor is too much for only him. That they should bring more men into this travail and bed That the labor is too much for him is crying. So they want to break it. So when we prayed, the angel broke that thing in our midst. We started praying. Now the time for the prayer meeting ended by four, five. People kept praying. Some went to work. Some didn't go to work. But prayer was on in the family house. If you go to work, come back, you keep praying. It was from that prayer, many ministries came and many people entered into their calling from that prayer. Sisters, we are saying that they feel they have calling like a Kuma. People don't tell you about calling because they don't enter calling because you told them. Something will happen to them. That thing you are telling them to do, they will take it by themselves. We kept praying. Prayer did not stop for up, up to three days. It was from that point I knew that there is an angel that suspends and breaks a vow. When he does it, what will happen? You know, it was after that time as Papa was telling us yesterday, they are prayer angels so, and they come to do many things as soon as he broke it people began to 
groan, pray, and travel. And from that time, I noticed that as the year was passing, God was wooing me deeper. And as he's wooing me, the oppression of God within that spiritual environment is becoming stronger. Becoming stronger. Till the point that I just noticed that if people see me, they will want to pray. Somebody saw my picture where I was eating. He said he feel like praying. I said, I'm eating. How do you feel like praying? There, something has happened to you. As a pastor, stop begging your members to pray. Opening prayer. I say, pray, pray, pray. They won't pray. I assure you that if I'm your member, I won't pray. You don't beg people to pray. They relate with what you are carrying. Stop forcing them. It's not there. It's not there. Be humble and, and get something. Stop. Stop. Pride can't take you anywhere. It's not there. Let's cry for it. Let's cry for it. There are men littered here. You don't know them. They'll be for, I was like that. If you refuse to heal the call of the Holy Ghost, he will look for somebody very close to you and put his hand on his life. You will cry. And I pray that mercy finds you. I pray that God will hear the things boiling in your heart. How much you can't continue like this until something happens. If they laugh at you that you are praying. See. I, sometimes people encourage me not to stop praying. I don't, I don't really need that encouragement too. Me, what will I do? Let's assume I stop praying now. What will I be doing? Tell me what I will be doing. I'm useless. Is this prayer after I prayed for long? I don't know. If I open the Bible, I understand. After I pray for long, if I lay hands on the sick, something will happen. After I pray for long, if I cry, demons will come. Is that prayer? And the deeper I'm getting, the stronger my calling is becoming. I saw myself move from the ground to heights by groanings. Something heavy. It's like a generator. Like a tank working. Oh my God. Ah! Everywhere you are, can we pray for the next two minutes? It is time to register your desire. And tell God I'm tired. There is a praying spirit within me. Oh. oh, oh my God. Oh my God. There is a praying spirit within me. Oh. Jesus, hear me. We come to the gates that answer to our names in the spirit. We ask that men be brought into travails and crawling. Let there be a baptism. Let the wombs of men be opened up. There is more. There is more. Pastor, you know this. I don't need to say it. There is more. There is more. We can feel it. It's a wound. We can feel it. We can feel it. Cry out. Cry out. Cry out! Cry out! Cry out! Is happening here, sister. Is your womb opening? It's opening, it's opening, it's opening. Wombs, Pastor, your wombs are opening. Wombs everywhere. Wombs, 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 wombs. Oh, Hallelujah! Oh, see the place.
Restore! I feel excited in my spirit. Hey! Fiat Papori Tidi Papori Tidi 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 My 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 So you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.